Well, hello, hello, hello. You are watching the CAOT TV show, and this is a special broadcast. I am so excited. I have some of my favorite people ever <laughs> on here with me that you're going to get the opportunity to meet. Most of you have met already, but we are celebrating the CAOT Blog Talk Radio Show. It's been since 2009, 2009. It is now 2020 and I've had the honor of working with a great group of authors over the years. And I have a few of them with me today to kind of talk a little bit about who they are and some of their most memorable or favorite moments on the CAOT Blog Talk radio show. So I wanna do some introductions first. I can't tell you, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this young lady. Her name is Mitzi Carasculo. She is not only a co-host, but we moved up in the world. We have an <laughs> producer. <laughs> she, Mitzi Carasculo is the executive producer of the CAO T blog talk radio show and Mitzi does a wonderful job with connecting with the authors and getting us scheduled and Mitzi you have us booked all the way into 2021 right I do all the way till August 2021 <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> we're hot on the market <laughs> And then I'm really excited to have two other co-hosts right now. We have Pastor Kevin Wayne Johnson. Pastor Kevin, how are you? I'm doing well, Lynn. Thank you for your leadership. Always glad to be a partner with a really, really good team of individuals. So Amen. happy to be on board. Amen. Amen. And we also have Leroy McKenzie Jr. Leroy, how are you? <laughs> I am doing fantastic. It is so good to see everybody. Yes. <laughs> it is so good to see everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, the CAOT, CAOT stands for Christian Authors on Tour. So the CAOT Blog Talk Radio Show airs the first, the third, and the fifth Friday of every month. Mitzi and Leroy are the co-hosts on the third Friday of the month. Pastor Kevin Wayne Johnson is the co-host on the first Friday of the month. And then on the fifth Friday of the month, we have Pastor Stephen Turner. <laughs> and we have Apostle Dr. Mary Washam on the fifth Friday of every month. And so I'm really excited because since 2009, we've had the opportunity to interview Christian authors from all over the world. I remember we had an author one time from the UK, <laughs> you know, that we interviewed. <laughs> and so it's just been a phenomenal opportunity to really um, showcase men and women of God who use writing as a tool for Christian ministry. And, you know, one of the things that I love about this particular opportunity is that it's absolutely free. Yes. <laughs> There's no cost involved. <laughs> if you are a Christian author and you have written a book, or if you're part of an anthology series and you are a contributing author, you are more than welcome to showcase your book on the CAOT blog talk radio show and so Mitzi I want to start with you won't you talk a little bit about who you are you have that beautiful backdrop in the back so mm -hmm. I want you to talk I yeah do. It is I do I feel like I should move, move over some so you can see it <laughs> I want you to talk about that backdrop I will. Yes, and your book I will. <laughs> I will I will yes I am so excited um I it seems like this season of uh, although we're in a pandemic, it is being such a blessing for so many people. And I've noticed that, especially this year, um, I am the CEO of, of Loved, Healed, and Restored. Loved, Healed, and Restored is a empowerment to overcome sexual abuse and rape through the word of God. And it's kind of how to Loved, Healed, and Restored started with my first book, which was In Jesus' Name, Please Don't Touch Me There which was my personal journey in overcoming sexual abuse and rape. And when God spoke to me about loved, healed, and restored, that's what he's called me. 
And I tell you, as God calls you something, that is what's going to always try to attack you. You're going to run into not feeling loved, always sick, or something going on, and no restoration in life. And I felt that I always, and I always keep that in mind when, um, when I get into a, a tribulation that no, 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 God has delivered me from this. First Peter 2, 9 is when he um, gave me that uh, scripture foundation for the ministry. And, uh, and now it has branched off into, from my first journal, um, telling about all that I went through from as a child through a teenager through an adult, has now been started with, I'll actually kind of grab my books here. In Jesus' name, please don't touch me there. Loved, Healed, and Restored is a daily journal, is to journal with. Um, you know, as like we always say, writing is a tool for ministry. And writing is to get out your thoughts and your dreams and your aspirations. And then we started off with, I'm part of an anthology. I'm blessed to be part, actually. And I met the author via Christian Authors on Tour. She was um, uh, an author, and she came on our show with her books. And Debreda De Sally, who was our compiler, and uh, some of the, actually, the other women that's part of the anthology are um, now first-time authors and have been on our show. And Graceful Seasons, my chapter is um, Beyond the Pain, and my chapter is in overcoming, um, again, here we go with Loved, Healed, and Restored, that umbrella, um, the death of my mother and the death of my brother. Um, and as you may know, with my mother, it was going to check on her and found her deceased. And my brother was killed in a drive-by shooting, and his death is unsolved. Um, as as of today, as we know, we are still standing on God to find those who had took his life. And now, un Love, Healed, and Restored is still doing Love, Healed, and Restoring, right? We're blessing um, girls in schools with um, a package, a love gift. I call it a love gift that has, it comes with composition notebooks. It comes with folders, it comes with um, stenal notebooks, and of course, all kind of girly stuff. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> and, you know, with, you know, lotion and toothbrush and um, fingernail polish, fingernail polish, and all type of toilet sprees for girls. And so Love, Till, and Restore has been this, uh, it, as I said, it started off with this umbrella and God giving me that. And who knew what God would now have it to be, to be able to share with, um, other young girls and some boys. I actually had some boys at a last event I was at. I actually, and that's the thing I always got to keep in mind that with sexual abuse and rape, that many think that it's always just girls, and I have to keep in mind that it's boys too as well. Um, I had a boy that come up to me at one event. It was a middle school young man, and you know he hung around me for a while, kept coming back. I'm thinking that he wanted cake because I was giving out cake and he shared um, that he would like to have a basket, but he wanted his for his mom. And so, which was really nice and, you know, really warmed my heart that he was so thoughtful of that for his mom. And he knew exactly what the mission was and what the ministry was. Um, and I am just so thankful to be with Christian Authors on Tour. I, I have to say my favorite memory of Christian Authors on Tour was when I met Lynn. I can still remember the day I met her at uh, the Baltimore Book Festival. And I don't even know if my book was out then. I think I just had flyers and like homemade business cards and, you know, just giving her a detailed printout of what the book was about. And when she invited me, that was the start of everything for me. And I always um, think of that moment. I can remember having that conversation with her and feeling as if she was so, um, she was listening. She wasn't just, you know, sometimes people run away from a table that deals with abuse or a sexual things. And that's, you know, that's what they usually do is they really don't come by my table. But I remember her being so intently listening to me and, We've had this love affair 
you know, just <laughs> love to heal and restore the fair from that day forward. And that was in 2009. Um, I believe I was at the Baltimore Book Festival. So, and, you know, I'm so thankful to be a part because even working um, with, with you guys, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Kevin, I always said Pastor Kevin, um, he brings this sense of peace. Like you can like feel the peace of him, whether we're on a call or if we're um, uh, in, in the presence, especially at the last event, uh, December, our last event that we had in December, I still have my notes actually in my Love, Healed and Restored journal uh, when you led that. So I am so thankful. And Leroy, Leroy's like, you know, I have four brothers. This is like another brother. We laugh about stuff at the same time. So I am so thankful to be a part of this ministry. And I just look forward to all that God is gonna to bring to his Christian office on tour. And thank you for allowing me to share in this with you. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember the thing that got mm -hmm. me was your book cover. That little girl on the book cover is what caught my attention. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I remember talking with you about that, and, and you're right, your topic yes. of your book is just so, mm -hmm. it's so serious, and it is one of those conversations that even in the church that we tend to shy away from, so I'm really thankful that God has used you in the way that he has, and I'm really excited that you, you are a co-host and have been co-hosting yeah. and now taking on this new role, and it's funny when you talked about Pastor Kevin, Pastor Pastor Kevin is our leadership guru. <laughs> you know, he is just like so cool. I love him so much. And, <laughs> and so I got exactly what you said when you said yes. he, he, he's always so laid back. He's always so confident. <laughs> cool, and, calm, and collective. Right, like, cool, calm, and collective. <laughs> So Pastor Kevin, listen, I want you to talk a little bit about who you are. Now you have a lot going on, but wow, it's been um, such a great journey just to have you part of us over the years and to see how God is growing your ministry as well. Yeah, well, it is indeed an absolute joy to be connected with the Christian Authors on Tour from the very beginning up until this point. Uh, I'm a long-term relationship type guy. Uh, when I connect with good people, I want to stay connected with good people. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my, my motto is drama free. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm a drama free type of person. Uh, I, I don't so associate with toxic organizations or toxic people. Uh, that's how I keep my peace. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a native of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I went to Armstrong High School and I matriculated to Virginia Commonwealth University School of Business. Uh, one year after graduation, I started my government career where I stayed for 34 years and I just recently retired from the federal government about two and a half years ago. And uh, during my time, I, I really took an interest in leadership during my mid-level portion of my career and then at the senior level portion of my career. Uh, I pay close attention to my advocates, my champions, and my sponsors. And I also pay close attention to those that tried to sabotage uh, and who were divisive and, and rude and sarcastic. And uh, I made a decision that I wanted to be a good leader because I believe that good leaders make the world a much better place. Uh, and not just the world, I think it makes families better. It makes friends better, neighbors better. Uh, membership in our civic and social organizations, is, it, they're better because they're led well by good people. And so that, that, that's where I am. Now, now, prior to retirement, I was on a two-track, two-system track. Uh, while I was actively engaged in my secular career, uh, I was also called into ministry, and I accepted the call. And it's been 21 years ago. Uh, my wife and I were ordained into the Christian ministry together as deacons 21 years ago. Uh, and from there, the Lord just opened up all of these doors. Uh, I've been actively involved with the men's choir. I've served as an adjunct professor. I've served as the president of a, of a, of a Bible school. I've served as an associate pastor in the local church, and I've served as a senior pastor in the, in the local church. Uh, I've served in different capacities at the regional level, national level, and the international level while I travel over to Kenya, Africa, 
uh, every year for church development, leadership training uh, with their bishops and their pastors and their ministers and their lay leaders. In parallel with that came the writing, re taking the intellectual capital and putting it on paper. And so my very first book series was Give God the Glory, um, a series of eight nonfiction books that walked us through giving him the glory through personal relationships, uh, on the job, in the workplace, in the family, um, in the church, and then while we're at rest and relaxation. Those were the core messages. Uh, and it was, a, it was a phenomenal journey. And I did the ministry work in conjunction with finishing my career. So I was always on this two track system and I was able to do it because the Lord just kept me focused. And because we're connected with Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, um, I was always at peace in terms of what he would have me to do. He opened doors on my job and he opened doors in ministry. And I walked through all of them. It is it, just been a phenomenal ride. And in addition to serving as the principal author with the Give God the Glory series, I've also been a contributing author to another seven books. So today in 2020, uh, I am associated with about 17 books, uh, including my latest and greatest, which is in the area of leadership. Leadership with a servant's heart. Uh, you'll see now that I have transitioned into retirement. Uh, you'll see my logo here on my shirt, the Johnson Leadership Group. Uh, I founded the Johnson Leadership Group and serve as the chief executive officer. Uh, it's been about two and a half years now. And yet again, um, I give God the glory. He is opening up all of these doors. I'm learning a lot as a business owner because there's a transition period, uh, but I'm at total peace as we go through this transition because I'm a strategic thinker and I walk by faith. So I'm, I'm going to build this business until I'm 70 and then I'm going to sell it for seven figures. That, that's the plan. That's, that's what's in the marketing plan so that we'll have a blueprint for whoever comes behind me to continue. The person that I pass the baton to, they will continue to generate and create and train and teach and coach and mentor the next generation of leaders as I'm teaching them to do right now. So that's the journey that I'm on. And Speaking of 2020, uh, as of January of this year, I've been on a national book tour. We started out face-to-face -face in January and February prior to the pandemic. And then around the end of April into the month of May, we transitioned to virtual. So whether it's an invitation to be a speaker or reaching out to the local bookstores or being a part of a convention or part of a summit, there's so many different ways that we can connect podcasts, TV shows, radios, getting the word out and leading this conversation around what leadership is all about. Servant leadership, empathy, compassion, trust, value, respect, honoring people that we are entrusted to lead so that they in return will want to be a high performer and will want to generate high productivity because of how they're being treated. That, 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 that's right, that is the hot in the sauce right there. Mm -hmm. and, and it all comes from scripture. There's nothing, Ecclesiastes the preacher teaches us that there's nothing new under the sun. It's all right there in scripture. Yeah. We just have a responsibility to give credit to where credit is due. And from Genesis to Revelation, it, it, it's all there. So it, it's nothing new. Uh, it's just making sure that we don't take credit for it, but we give God the glory for it. Um, two of my favorite CAOT radio interviews are with two gentlemen who are no longer with us. One resides from my home state in Virginia, Hopewell, Virginia, and one resides from the great city and great state of St. Louis, Missouri. Minister Dwayne Clemens, him and his beautiful wife were good friends of mine. Uh, he actually came to my church. Uh, when I was pastoring there, he was part of an author's event that we had. They were gracious enough to drive up um, from Virginia to come and participate. Uh, I loved him so much because of his humor, uh, but also because of his acumen and his intel, uh, not just in scripture, but in life. Uh, a phenomenal brother uh, that we missed. Uh, he loved the Lord. Uh, he was a minister of the gospel. Uh, and, and that was one of my two 
favorite interviews that we had a chance to do many, many years ago, probably seven or eight years ago. Uh, you'll go back and find it in the archives. And then the other gentleman who also was no longer with us, the, the late great doctor, Steve Heyman, out of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Such an inspiration, such a joy. I love being around him, words of wisdom. Uh, he was a powerful man uh, and we will miss him dearly. But he deposited a lot into our lives and those are my two most memorable. Um, when I go down the road and I think about all the interviews that we've done over the years, uh, Minister Dwayne Clemens and the doctor, Steve Heyman, uh, resonate in my mind. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. Kevin Wayne Johnson, uh, my time is up and I thank you for yours. Pastor Kevin, yes. You know, um, Minister Dwayne was also a co-host with us as well and um we we definitely miss him so much i can still hear his laughter and he has that southern drawl i can hear him calling <laughs> my name you know yeah. but yes yes thank you so much for sharing that me memory what, what what wonderful memories and 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 our beloved doc <laughs> dr steve yes. amen we surely miss him he would travel all over the country with us at every tour stop Doc, every, everyone. everyone he did a lot for veterans too yeah yeah, yeah. Lot, yes. and, and he's so financially into the caot tv show um when we yep. did the christian writers literary festival for the first time in 2011 dr Heyman paid for a media company to come and follow him and come into Baltimore. And it's a it's a wonderful, at least one of the interviews is still on uh, YouTube through Herd TV. Mm -hmm. And she did a wonderful expose. It was actually two parts. It was a part one and a part two. And Pastor Kevin, I think you were interviewed for that as well. Um, and and um, she interviewed um, a number of Christian authors on tour authors. And she did a, a expose of the city, which was really great. Oh. And at the time, that event was at the library um, in Baltimore. And um, it, it's just a great, great thing. And, and I was so appreciative of Dr. Heyman because he really went into his own pocket. And that wasn't, that was very expensive. And, and, right. that's, and, and you that's, didn't ask. He just, he just right. really did. Yes. Right. And, and I so appreciate that. And that was one of the things I think that um, triggered my interest in the media. And, um, you know, it wasn't long after that, that I start thinking about, you know, how can we do TV? You know, it took a little while, but that experience was, was really the catalyst that got me thinking about, hey, not only might we do radio shows, but we could do TV too, and how mm -hmm. to make that happen. And so, yes, we are so thankful for both Dr. Stephen Heyman and Minister Dwayne um, Clemens just for, you know, their love, their support, and we do miss them dearly. We do.